Hey everybody, this is Tara with the Painted Cicada. Um, I wanted to go live today and just have some fun painting in my art journal. Um, so I hope that you can join me. If you want to grab a tracer for what I'm making today, um, let me put a link to that in the comments here. Um, if you are watching me and you have not watched somebody go live with StreamYard yet, please give StreamYard permission. Once you do it one time, it'll work for anybody on Facebook um, that you watch. And um, what I'm going to do now is just switch my camera and get started. Uh, most of what I do today, I'm actually not going to use the tracer at all. I'm just going to paint. Um, but feel free to use the tracer if that's your thing. And let me switch my camera up here so that you can see what I'm painting. All right, so I'm going to create a vase with some fall flowers. Uh, the colors I'm going to use, really, I have just two shades of red, two shades of orange, two shades of yellow, kind of a yellow ochre, and then two shades of green. I just went with fall colors, um, but feel free to use whatever colors that you have. Hi, Shalane, how are you? Thank you for hopping on. So I always have white and black available. And what I'm going to do um, first is get my background started. Um, and for the background, I'm going to use some of these. I'm going to use both of these yellow ochres and maybe some white. Oop. I can get some of this paint out. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is just dip my paintbrush in a little bit of white and then grab one of these yellows. Um, and I'm pretty much just going to mix these three colors on my background. just going for it. The trick here, um, and especially if you're using an absorbent paper, like I've got watercolor paper, is just to make sure you've got a lot of paint on that brush. As I move this paint around, it's going to get kind of blendy. I like it streaky. So once I feel like I've got some pretty good coverage, I'm going to come back with more paint. But first, I've got to cover up that page. So I get coverage, I'm just going to go back, add in some streaks, use up all these beautiful yellows while I put on my palette here. That is it. So I've got just this nice, beautiful ochre color. my brush. 
brush. And while I have this out, um, I need to get a brown and I'm going to add some brown on the bottom um, to be my table. Maybe if I can find one. This color that I'm using is just raw umber. The exact colors are not real important so long as you're using what you like. And I'm just going to create kind of a just a line down here and I'm just going to paint in some brown. And I'm okay if it mixes in with that yellow. This is just going to be my tabletop here that my vase is going to sit on. Again, I'm just going to leave it a little streaky. Um, Shaleen, I kind of used the tracer that I made. Um, I've got a trace tracer with um, a vase and some flowers, and I used that for a spring painting a long time ago. And so I just wanted to switch that up today and kind of um, turn that into a fall painting. And so I actually have, I have a color cheat sheet. Um, let me see if I can reach it without knocking everything over. Um, so this was my tracer that I drew um, these flowers on top of, and then I colored it in um, just to give it some fall touches. So that's what I'm using as my inspiration. Um, but I always am flexible. I just like to see where it goes. But sometimes as you're creating, you get some fun ideas. But I definitely am in the mood to start thinking about fall. So fall colors for sure. I'm going to dry this real quick. I don't need it to be completely dry, but dry enough. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some white and I'm going to make the shape of my base. Um, again, there's no right or wrong. So I'm making a rounded base. If you're a square base person, that's fine. If you want to make a funky shape, that's fine. Do whatever you like. I'm just going to take some white. Um, and I'm going to sketch in the shape of this vase. So I know I want it down here. I want it to be on the table. And then I want most of the vase um, to be flowers. So I'm just going to kind of swing that around. And I'm just creating um, a sketch. So I know I'm going to paint over this. So I'm not too worried if some of those background colors 
left into this. This is just so I know where I'm going. All right, so base here. By adding this white, this will give me a nice um, layer in between the background and in between the color that I paint my base. So that's why I do that. So that's where my vase is going to go. And I'm going to finalize the vase later. But now I know where I can put my flowers. Um, so I'm going to start. Um, I'm, my orange flowers are going to be my round flowers. So I'm going to get two, my two colors of orange. And I know that I can mix some of that white in there. So I really can uh, create a bunch of different shades and so let's see what i'm gonna do is start i'm just gonna pick one of these colors and i'm gonna work back to front um so i'm gonna start one kind of right in the middle here knowing that most of this flower is gonna be covered up so this is gonna be Kind of the shape here. And then what I'm going to do is just scallop around. And then I'm going to layer on top of this. This gives me the initial shape of that flower there. And then what I can do is just add different, different shades of orange in there. Maybe lighten it up a little bit. And I am not going for realistic flowers, y'all. I'm going for fun. Fun flowers. So that's what my orange flowers are going to look like. And I can come back through when I'm finished and add some details with paint markers and such or a detail brush. Um, I'm just going to zip this dry a little bit. alternate between my red and my orange flowers. So here's my red colors. I've got a, a dark burgundy and a bright red here. Um, what I'm going to do for the red, um, let's see here. I'm going to make the center I want my round center to be. And then I am going to pull from my center out. Make some petals. And because I am layering, this one goes on top. these petals what I'm going to do is I like to go out and then I'll get some paint um, and I'll kind of shape them and go right back in so that there's kind of two tones to each petal Oh, 
And so I'm just going to alternate my orange flowers and my red flowers. So maybe I'll put another red flower here, start with my center. Switch my red. There's no right or wrong here. It doesn't matter how big or small you go. We're just adding some variation. orange flower over here. And then on my tree star, I do have a flower down here. So I'm going to make sure I do that so I don't forget this guy. these orange flowers and I want them a little dry so I can add more layers. Those orange ones are kind of sunflowery, kind of like a mix between a sunflower and a daisy. I don't know if they really exist, but in my head they exist, so I went for it.
anybody else like totally ready for fall or is that just me? Because I cannot wait for fall. Cannot wait. My camera's a little out of focus there. There we go. As I start to layer these flowers up, I'm using a little bit of strategery here. No, Shalene, fall marks the beginning of camping in my house. I love camping in the fall, girl. That's the best time to camp because the fire keeps you warm and... Sweater weather. All right, once I get a few flowers in there, how I like them, then I like to add accent flowers or accent leaves. I'm going to do that with my greens. So I'm going to put two greens on my palette here. And I'm probably going to do some leaves and just some, some little shoots. Um, 
I'm going to use a liner brush for some of these little things that poke out. So I'm just going to thin down my dark green here. I've got a darker green and a light green. This is like a, I don't know what it's called, forest green. I'm just got a nice thin liner. And what I'm going to do is we're just going to create some little wispy wispies. But in order to make this work, it's got to be nice and thin. So maybe a couple here. A little place over here um we're like it's just showing through the background so i'm just going to cover up this with one of these oranges to make it look like there's some flowers back there just a little touch up all right so i've got this um these wispy things how i like them now I need to, I'm going to create some stems and add some leaves. So I'm going to mix this dark green with some white just to get a different color here to make my stems. So I don't want it to be the exact same color as the leaves. And I don't want it to be the same color as my little wispy sprigs either. All right, so now let's see. Oh, well, I know I want one or two down here, so this will be the center of my leaves. Let's see, I'll put some. I'm just kind of sketching these in and I am going to fill these in with some color. In a bit. Now some of these are going to go behind my flowers. I'm just kind of sketching them where I want them. Some can go over your flowers. So wherever you feel like there needs to be a little bit of color. So I've created my leafy shapes, so now I'm just going to throw in some of this light green. And I'm just going out from the middle of that stem. Shaleen. I don't do flowers nearly enough. I really like painting flowers. One of the reasons why is because there's never, there's no right or wrong. 
there's so many different kinds of flowers in the world that if you create one and it doesn't look like something you recognize, it probably exists somewhere. So I just like to have fun with flowers. When you look at my flowers you can tell they're obviously not supposed to be realistic they're just they're just for fun I'm going to let these flowers dry a little, these leaves dry a little. I am going to work on this vase, and I want my vase to be striped white and black, so I'm just going to get some black out here. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is just get some of this black. Then I'm gonna outline the base here. And I'm gonna throw a little line here where my table meets the background. And then I'm just going to create some, some stripes. And because the base is curved, I want my stripes to be a little curvy. So I don't need them to be perfect because my flowers aren't perfect. So if I'm going for this whimsical fun look here, I don't need my base to be perfect, right? Once I've got my lines, my stripes where I want them, I can fill in the black. That's the easiest part. The white will probably need two coats. Let's see. I don't know why I switched to white. Black first, then white. Use all the same color at once. Hi Mel, how are you? Thank you. Just having some I don't know, fall inspiration today. It's really hot and humid here. I see a lot of people online posting ideas for fall. and I want to get in on it, so.
that's good. It's nice in the UK today. That is fantastic. We've actually had really nice weather last week. We had some really nice weather. It was cool. It was sunny. This oops, today is just hot here. Okay. I made a few mistakes. I see I need to fix, but I'm not going to stress about them because painting's supposed to be fun, right? And the best part of acrylic is that once it's dry, you can paint right over it. And it's like you never had a mistake at all. All right, so I'm going to add some white now. Brighten up these white areas. And if you want to give this a shot, um, there is a tracer. Um, most of this I just drew by, you know, I drew with my paintbrush as I was painting today. Just feel free to use that tracer if that makes life easy for you. And some of this black right here is going to have to go. Definitely, I'm going to have to touch up this middle area here. to have nice clean lines but that's what layers are for Let's see if I can get a small paintbrush I'm going to touch up some of these flowers. But like I mentioned earlier, I'm not worried about this being a work of perfection. I kind of want it to be whimsical and fun.
All right, so I need to just fix up this white in the middle. All right, now I'm going to dry this, get, just give the whole painting a little bit of a once over to dry it. Because my next step is going to be um, some paint pens just to add a little bit of fun. And I need this to be dry. here that just did not get color on it so I'm just going to spread some color over there and then clean that up a bit all right so I'm going to get my Posca pens out any kind of paint pens will do really see, I don't even... oh. Oh. I'm going to start by outlining uh, some of these flowers. I'm going to use my, I've got two sizes. Um, I believe this one is called medium and this one is a fine. But I'm going to outline with my fine tip first. Um, but I'm going to outline all of the circles here and the outline. Keeping in mind um, which ones are on top and which ones are behind. I don't want to mess up the layers. So I know this one's on the very top, so I'm doing this one first. So I'm going to work top to back so that I don't, I don't goof up my layers.
I'm going to give my base just another outline so that it's clean and crisp. I'm doing this with my thicker medium sized Posca paint pen. And if you want to, you can clean up these lines in here by going over them as well. just cleans it up makes it look fresh um, and now I'm just gonna add some some fun little whimsy to my flowers just making sure that I use repetition and some of these patterns For the most part, this painting is finished. I'm just going to continue to add some fun little dots and details.
And don't be afraid to add details with white marker as well. when I get it just how I like it um I'll come back through and add just a little more uh with a gel pen um just because it varies uh the the details a little bit so I may add you know just a, a few little squiggles just some fun But it just adds some some depth and dimension breaks it up and again don't be afraid to switch between a white and a black pen I think I'm at a place where I really like it. So I'm just going to let this um, sit and completely dry. And then I'll probably just add a clear coat over the top to seal it. And if you create with me today, um, I would absolutely love it if you would share your work. Um, I've got a Facebook group called Mixed Media Crazy. And you can share all of your work in there, whether you make it with me or not. So um, don't be afraid to hop in there. And um, if you find value in any of my free lessons, uh, please consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash painted cicada. Um, this helps me keep my dream of sharing free art lessons uh, going strong. Uh, so feel free to do that. Um, but that is completely optional. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will be posting um, a time lapse tutorial tomorrow. And then I will be going live again on Thursday at noon. So I'll see you then. Have a good day, everybody.